Welcome to the Digital Awakening Podcast. This is episode five, um, coming live from the Richards Bay Industrial Development Zone Techno Hub. My name is Langa Zulu, Managing Director um, at AlgorithmLab.com. I'm joined by a very special leader. Thank you very much, and uh, I really feel at home here. I see young people are very passionate, they're driven, and this, the country has got a great future. Great one. Um, just a quick reflection um, of the techno hub or the techno park. Um, mm. What what what, what does it, it, it symbol it, it symbolize for you? Does it give you a sense that the country is moving in the right direction? Certainly, you know, back then uh, when I was still resident in KZN, um, a friend of mine who used to be the CEO of Itala back then, mm. um, he said to me, look, I'm going to apply for funding to start an ITZ in Richards Bay. Mm. I thought he was joking. Wow. Some years later, I come to something like this. Really, the country is progressive. I think it's showing people of this country that if you believe in yourself, I think you can achieve quite a lot of things. What I saw today in terms of the residents and infrastructure that has been put on this particular place in Richards Bay, um, it's, it's going to be a very good um, uh, starting point for us to develop our entrepreneurs going forward. So I'm, I'm motivated. Um, I'm very happy to see young yeah. people taking advantage of, of, such, of such platforms. Great one. Um, media, information, communications and technology, CETA, let's get, let's get straight into it. What is it about um, for other people who may not necessarily know about such an institution? Okay, as you know that there is about 21 CETAs in the country, uh, which is one of them. We specialize in media, uh, in journalism, in film, in ICT, in electronics and in technology. Mm. So we offer uh, learnerships, uh, uh, bursaries, internships, uh, and work integrated learning uh, for, for kids who want to plow their skills in those particular subsectors of, of our country. Uh, so we would normally administer that through mandatory grants for companies that are paying levies and also through discretionary grants for companies that are paying levies or also not paying levies. Mm. Uh, this, th this comes in a form of um, obviously a process of accreditation and making sure that people, they do adhere to SLAs that we issue them because we're pushing for uh, uh, work placement. One of the challenges that we have as a CETA, and I would say for all the CETAs, is, is, is training for the streets. Mm. You know, it's very sad when you see our kids carrying a certificate uh, that has got a CETA name or brand, but they're sitting at home and doing nothing. Mm. So as a CETA, we are pushing for 100% placement. Yeah. Anyone that we try to help or give grant funding to, one of our main con important conditions is that all those learners must be placed somewhere. Mm. Uh, and I think that's the lever that we use to make sure that we, we bring the unemployment down in this country. Uh, and also the kind of training that we, are, we want to offer as, as a CETA, uh, we have been tasked with uh, uplifting entrepreneurs Startups like yourselves are mm. finding it hard to get accreditation. So mm. we've been tasked by the board uh, to take up the opportunity of making sure that our, our, our entrepreneurs are assisted towards accreditation. Mm. So as a CETA, we're going to be having our own um, uh, content developed for, our, for ourselves mm. so that it's easier for us to onboard as many entrepreneurs as possible in all our subsectors. In that way, if we cultivate our own timber, I think we've got some chance of success in transforming digitally the South African economy. Part of the problems that we have in the country and pretty much elsewhere as well, but of course we're focusing on South Africa, is the slow rollout of um, new strategies as well as new plans that we have as you're speaking to some of the things that should happen. How do we navigate around the slow pace um, within some of our institu in institutions in the country? Well, I think one of the things uh, that we can learn from is fees must fall. I think the, there was a lot of talk by the ruling party uh. that we need free education until there was a movement of some sort that forced that to happen much quicker. And I think the lessons from there is one could engage in a much more robust way without obviously resorting to such a movement to make sure that we can we can unravel and open up those opportunities that are out there for the for the youth. Now, as MICT CETA, particularly in our space, our mandate number one is to give funding uh, for learn for learnerships. Number two is to facilitate. So, as I said earlier on, when we met during your presentation, your stunning presentation. 
we said we want to have an MOU with people like Richards Bay IDZ so that we can make sure that this, this place is capacitated for the youth to plow the skills that we're giving them. Yeah. What's the point of teaching you Java when you can't have a lab where you can just play with your Java skills until you make something, mm -hmm. until you invent something, until yeah. you come up with a new application? And that's the most important thing. I think the, the planning side of things as a country is something that we need to perfect mm. so that... Uh, it's quicker for us to roll out all our programs. Also, yep. another thing is is the coordination between various entities of government. Yep. Uh, so what you find is that yep. our partnership with TVET, our partnership with universities, our partnership with community colleges, our partnership with centers of excellence like the Richards Bay Adizets are very critical because you'll find that we all are given the same targets. Tap into the rural economy, uh, reduce unemployment, etc. But mm. we all we all craft our own little programs that if we all match them together, it could be so powerful because we can pull all the power and the muscle. We can make an impact in a much more speedy manner. Um, as we're sitting right here, there is um, interns from some of the seaters, um, as you're speaking about um, ICT development and work integrated learning. Mm. But part of the problem that we have is there's a big gap between um, the curriculum in educational institutions as well as what is required in the workplace. How do we address that gap in your view? It, it, it is a big, big, big problem. Um, in one of my stakeholder forums when I was uh, at, uh, in Durban not too long ago, um, I met a couple of employers that are based at uh, Idube Trade Port, and one of the things they said to me was, look, we want to do neural networks, we want to do artificial intelligence, mm. but if you go to UKZN or University of Zululand, you can't find a lecture that can talk this language. Yep. So what, what are we supposed to do? So for us as MICT CETA, we are engaging with QCTO directly to develop uh, programs and qualifications that can, that can close that gap for that particular uh, organization. Remember, we, we need to assist our own companies in South Africa compete globally. And if our universities are taking like five years to change curriculum, yep. we need to plug into that gap and say, you know what, the universities can catch us later. Mm -hmm. we, we will work with QCTO to develop qualifications whereby those entities that are based in Umtlanga Rocks can compete with a company based uh, in Munich, for instance. Mm -hmm. Because you find that in, in the Internet of Things, um, there are no boundaries anymore. You, you find yourself having to compete with companies that are based elsewhere in the world. Mm. But elsewhere in the world, they are supported mm. uh, by a very dynamic, vibrant, up-to-date, cutting-edge education, mm. which does not augur well if you compare it with our own in South Africa. So mm. as CETAs, we have to speedily close that gap. Mm. And for me, that's very critical because it means our learners are relevant, our learners are able to plug into opportunities mm. that are available not only in South Africa but globally. You spoke about the coordination of different institutions um, in the country. Um, I, I think it's a big, big, big problem. We have, for example, um, at um, a higher level, you have a problem where the attitude, the mindset of the students is already messed up because of what happened earlier on, say, at foundation level. Mm. How do we synchronize what happens at a foundation level um, with what is happening, um, for example, at colleges as well as institutions? Because now it impacts um, the attitude of these learners that come out of these institutions who are who must be shaping up the future and creating yeah. new opportunities yeah. for themselves. I, I, mean, I mean, you take, for instance, the job that you guys are doing here mm. as, um, as, as, as the algorithm lab. One of the things that we want to achieve as MICT CETA is to make sure that we've got enough pool of coders in this country. But it can't start at a tertiary level because at a tertiary level or even post-tertiary, you are just plugging into a gap. We yep. need to advance uh, and impart knowledge about basic coding principles at a very young age. Okay. Because if you find that if the, if, if, the young, if the young girls and boys are able to focus on those coded principles, as they grow up, they build on those principles and they're able to, to talk and even innovate and even grow that subject area or mm. field of study even further. So, so, so we cannot as a country aim to plug the gap at the, at, right at the very end. It needs mm. to start at, at, at the start. Yep. Now, take a, a selfie stick. A selfie stick was invented by a, a very young Chinese boy mm. because that's what they do 
uh, they do uh, they do art create and for them art is technology mm -hmm. and they and that young boy did it at a very young age now we cannot disadvantage our youth and 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 say to our youth you know what you, you, you need to wait <laughs> for uh, for this and that uh, and our youth also cannot be lazy you mm. see uh, our youth are very happy to tell you about the new iphone but the question i'm asking you is do you think the youth in america are very happy to hear about the product you made mm. Because there's nothing you've made, yeah. but you are very happy to buy other things from other countries. Yeah. And I think you having started this organization, you are doing a fantastic job because you are saying, I'm willing to make sure that there's coding skills available in South Africa yeah. so that we can make our own IP. There's a lot of money we pay as a country on imported IP. Yeah. We need to make IP and sell IP to the other countries as well. Now, what you find, youth get engaged in all these things that are not helping us because they are not focused, they are not being, they're not being tunneled towards making things that are beneficial for this country. If we can, if we can tick that box, yeah. I think the noise at the top will end. Speaking of the noise of the top, a lot of CEOs have been resigning uh, mm -hmm. the past few weeks. Are you not going to resign? <laughs> uh, I'm three months old into my job, so I'm still enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Last one, um, what, can, what can we expect from you as a leader um, mm. and head of the institution? Well, um, for me, seeing my stakeholders and making sure that we uplift our entrepreneurs in this country is very critical. Um, I've been traveling around the country, seeing centers of excellence, seeing young, bubbly, very innovative entrepreneurs. My job is to make sure I uplift them with skill. Uh, one day, this two-man show that you have, one day must employ 50 people. Mm. And the CETA will help you do that. You need to apply for interns. You need to apply for learnerships, for bursaries. What I would like you to encourage you as well is try by all means to get people that can work for you who want to dive deeper into certain subjects. Uh, I'm sure right now you're using coding, coding platforms that are from the US or from, the, from Europe. Mm. When are you going to develop our own coding platform? We have Java as one of the platforms. Mm. Why can't you come up with Java, for instance, mm. uh, you know, as an idea? Because mm. the moment you develop something in Java, you need to pay royalties, you need to pay all these things. These are all the things that mm. are eating into our economy that is struggling. Mm. And if you can say to yourself, I want to pace myself. I will program with Java, but then in three years' time, I want to start making our own Java for South Africa and, and dump Java so that we now are a powerhouse of programming in South Africa. If I can help you do that, I think I would have done my job. Beautiful conversation with the CEO of Media, Information, Communication, as well as Technology, CETA, right here, coming live from you, Richard Spey, Industrial Development Te Technology Hub, um, as we are having a conversation about what CETAs are and how they're going to impact the future as we see pushing growth, economic growth, pushing opportunities, um, especially for young people within this very country. You can, you can subscribe on our channels on YouTube as well as Facebook. Until next time, keep innovating. Thank you so much. Um, Fantastic.